dynamic routing. All right. So in this diagram, I already configured all the IP addressing. All right. If you configure your IP addressing properly, you should be able to ping point to point, from point to point, from here to here, here to here. Let's try it now. Successful. Oh, we fail. Uh, successful. All right. Sometimes you ping from here to here is not successful because uh, sometimes when you ping, uh, the router then pick this IP address to ping here. So when this packet reaches here, it doesn't know how to come back here. So therefore, the ping will fail. All right. Uh, or sometimes when you ping. Uh, it failed because of this, all right? So, but you cannot ping uh, across the network because uh, you don't have routing. You don't have routing, all right? If you can see on the routing table of each of the router, all right, you can see for router one and router two. If you can see from here, there's three networks here. One, two, three. Three networks. But then in the routing table for router one, there's only two networks, which is router one and route, uh, network one and network two. You get this network automatically because when you key in the IP address and the net mask on this router, automatically you will get this network address. But similarly for router two. Okay. So what is missing here in router 1 is this network. So what you need to do is, in this router, you need to add this network and the next hop is here. Alright, so we're going to do the adding now. So let's do the adding. For router 1, you use the static route. We're going to add the network 200.1.3.0. Two hundred dot one dot two dot two five two. Add. See you add. Then uh, this router already have three network one two three network. All right. So <coughs> there's three network here. It has full reachability of the network, so you can reach anywhere. All right. But we haven't finished yet because this router cannot reach this network. So in this scenario, what will happen if this PC want to ping this one? It will, the packet will be able to go all the way here. And on the return path, this router doesn't know how to go back to here. So the ping will fail. All right? So in this case, this router, if you can see router 2, you have only two networks. These two networks, all right? Network 1 is missing. 200.1 is missing, so on this router, you need to add this network, and the next hop is here. Alright, we're going to do that. Once you add it, you can see the router here is added. Both router got three networks. Both router can reach all the networks in the diagram. So you have full reachability now, and you should be able to ping by now. Okay, and you can be able to ping across successfully. Okay. Now we're going to talk about dynamic routing, all right? So this router, router one, is connected to network one and network two, all right? This router one is connected to network one and network two. Uh, this is network one, and this is network two, and this is network two, all right? Network one is 200.1.1.0, is 200.1.2.0 and this router, router 2 
is connected to network 2 and network 3, which is 200.1.2.0, So, in order for you to do routing, router 1, you will tell initially, you will tell this to router 2 that network 1 and network 2, this one is belong directly or connected directly. That means that these two network is connected directly to router 1. They will send the message across to this router 2. This router 2 they will send the message across here and you say that this two network is connected directly to router 2. Alright? In order for you to have connectivity, you must have one overlap network, which is this one. This network is the same and is overlap. Alright? Alright? So they must have one same and overlap network, which is this one, so that this one will give you the connectivity. Alright? Okay? That's very important thing. In order to have reachability, you must have an overlap network. Alright? So after they have this both router exchange the information, this router one will know network 3, 200.1.3.0. Wire router 2, which is available at. Alright, that's how the dynamics routing works. So, in this router, what you're supposed to configure? You're supposed to configure network 1 and network 2 in your routing protocol. Alright? Network 3, you don't have to configure. Alright? Network 3 you don't have to configure. Alright? Uh, from my experience, a lot of people when they're tense, when the network doesn't work, they're going to put a lot of networks in their router, which is false. Alright? So over here, the same thing. Uh, this one we will realize that uh, network 1 is reachable. 200.1.1.0 slash 24 is reachable via router 1 at 200.1.2.2.0. Alright? Okay? So this is the uh, situation. Alright? Suppose I'm going to wrap this one off. Suppose you configure, if you configure network 1, uh, if you configure let's say 200.1.1.0, alright, then you are saying that in this router 1, that this network 3 is actually connected to here, alright, which is wrong. Alright? Which is wrong. Alright? So you only need to specify the you only need to specify all the directly connected interface. Alright? In routing. Then it can work already. Alright? So uh, let's do the configuration. So, all right. Uh, let's do the configuration in the packet tracer. Ah. Damn fine. All right. Ah. So on this router, yeah, first thing you remove all the static route, uh, so that 
so that uh, there won't be any confusion by the connectivity is caused by the static or the dynamic route. And over here, you just add all the network required. Uh, and over here, on the same router, on the router 2, you just add the network. Routing protocol. Uh, you can see over here the route is established uh, with the R. That means it's a rig, correct? Right? Established via the R or the rig. Okay. The same thing goes to this router. You can see a R. The route is established using the rig. Then you should be able to ping the PC from end to end. Alright, okay. Uh, that will be it for dynamic routing. Uh, now we're going to talk about default route. So in this configuration, there is a five network one, two, three, four, five, and the configuration is a fully static route and is working. So if you can see from this router, router one, there is this three static route configured here. Alright. 3 static route configure here and you can see if I try to ping from end to end right, it is successful right, if I ping from here to here it is successful but if you can see here from this router the rest of the network can be reached from here correct? correct? so uh, so what you can do, you can actually do a default route, right? Instead of having three routes, you can have only one route where if, then, if you cannot find the route, you just forward it to here, all right? That is a default route, all right? So let's do a default route here. First, all you need to do is click on the router and remove all the static route and just add the default route the network is zero, 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 and the net mask is also all zero. Add, all right? You add, then you can see on this router, the default, you have just one default route. So from three routes, it becomes one route, all right? So initially, you have a three route, become one route. Right? So you use a default route, you can basically you can reduce your your size of the routing cable. Alright? You can reduce the size of your routing cable. Okay, if you use a default route, you can reduce the size of your routing cable. That's the function of a default route. Alright? So let's try to think from end to end. It will work just fine. Alright? You can see successful. Alright? Uh, that's the purpose of the default route. But mainly the default route you should normally put at the at the leaf of the network. You should normally put at the leaf of the I mean at the end. Alright? Uh, Okay, that's about it. Okay.